<laughs> Hello guys, uh, today I have come uh, uh, with a simple project uh, trying to implement a power amplifier using a basic uh, Jelly Bean op amp, the LM741. Uh, as you can see in the schematic, the op amp is configured in such a way to uh, drive the uh, Darlington type configuration uh, the PMP and the NPN Darlington type configuration to output considerable amount of power into uh, a speaker load and uh, this op amp is configured in not in a traditional way uh, and uh, I'll explain what I mean by that uh, as you can see uh, the the way the Darlington's uh, amplify the signal uh, well, uh, the power to be exact because the op amp used as a voltage gain stage and the two Darlingtons are used for uh, uh, the uh, power amplification stage. Uh, so uh, the way the op amp works is uh, we I have a, almost a 10k potentiometer. It's just 1k but it should be 10k potentiometer. Uh, uh, in series with the positive input, uh, the positive power supply input of the op amp, and the negative power supply input of the op amp, uh, same thing, uh, 10k resistor. So what I do is uh, basically I adjust the um, the uh, the two potentiometers until the output uh, is uh, exactly about zero zero volts out, and uh, the op amp is configured in an inverting way. Mm, and the feedback is taken from the uh, uh, exactly from the output of the speaker and since uh, the output is going to be at zero volts uh, when no signal is applied at the input of the op amp we don't need a, a coupling capacitor to isolate the DC because it's already at zero volts so the way the this circuit works is uh, basically uh, when you drive a signal into the input for example when the signal is uh, increasing into the positive and uh, increasing part in the positive direction uh, the op amp uh, output uh, there is a small value resistor hooked up and uh, that small value resistor uh, basically what it does is when the signal is increasing in value at the input uh, it's a low value resistor so the op amp will try to drive uh, quite a bit of current through it and by doing that, it's going to be pulling a um, uh, considerable amount of current through its uh, the negative terminal uh, of its uh, power supply pin, and that will be uh, that will cause a voltage to get dropped across R5, and that change voltage is going to be sensed by the base of the two N thirty nine O four. Uh, and that will get amplified uh, and, and that will drive the 2AC5198 transistor as well. So basically when the, the, the positive uh, signal is increasing in value, the, uh, that, the output is going to be going into the negative direction. But, it's not, uh, but at, at the same time it will be driving quite a bit of current into the, uh, the speaker load. And the same thing when the the signal goes into the negative direction, the op amp will also try to drive the um, its output pin high, and that high signal is going to cause uh, quite a bit of current to get driven into R three, and um, in that case, then it will be pulling quite a bit of current through R six from the positive rail. And and that there will be a drop across R6, and that drop across R6 will be sensed by Q2, which is the 2N3906, and that will drive the 2SA1941 transistor. And also in the uh, in the positive in the when the signals go negative, we'll get a positive half, but at a considerable output current, right? You know, drive it to R8. So I'll 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 leave the schematic just for you guys to see how how the, the how this power amplifier works it's uh it's not bad it sounds quite quite okay uh there's quite a bit of distortion but not to the extent that it's unlistenable so yeah it's it's actually uh, not bad considering i'm using just lm341 uh lm741 
and also mm, poor choice of driver transistors the 2N3904s and 2N3906s because they're not the quietest devices in terms of noise yeah okay so anyway so and also I have as you can see uh, the most important thing is also you C2 needs to be there to isolate the because we don't want the current the current we want it to go although to our to our seven right we don't want it to go to uh, to our eight so we need to isolate that and the feedback is taken from the directly from the speakers as you can see and I also have a small feedback capacitor here uh, local feedback for the for the op amp for stability reasons and uh, yeah so basically this is a circuit anyway so let me show you the actual build I, I just whipped it up uh, in a breadboard here uh, okay so here it is uh, the op amp is right here the signal comes through here uh, I will be driving it through from my um, function function generator in a bit to do the power test but we'll do a listening test uh, from my uh, from my computer here We'll, uh, we'll basically drive it with an audio signal and also here is a 2N3906 uh, the PMP and that PMP drives through this drives this power transistor the A1941 which is uh, 2S A1941 and also the the NPN type is right here And the MPN type 2N3904 drives this transistor through here, back up to here, and drives the 2AC5198. Okay, and that drives uh, this output. The output is taken from here. As you can see, it goes through here, through here, into my speaker terminals. And then my speakers are over there. So it's just a simple speaker over there. So we'll be able to see and uh, drive my speaker there. That's a 10 watt uh, speaker actually, uh, 8 ohms. And uh, yeah, so the input as as I showed you is here. And then of course a few uh, uh, these uh, the ceramic capacitors are for decoupling. And the output, uh, that uh, 330 mic uh, that I showed you, for uh, isolating that small resistor at the output of the op amp is here and that basically feeds uh, the output into the speaker and also the feedback is this red wire as you can see from this, the output goes back into the uh, into that uh, 220k ohm resistor anyway so I'm feeding it from my power supply here plus or minus 18 and uh, it's on right now uh, actually we can do some uh, voltage measurement actually so I'll show you what points I'm measuring so first of all we're gonna measure these two inputs this the drop here quiescent when no current is getting applied when uh, when no signal I meant when no signal input the quiescent voltage here and the quiescent voltage here and also the quiescent current that flows through here and as you can see that quiescent current is very small since the output is going to be at zero as you can see the out the quiescent is this current for the negative rail and this current for the positive rail this is 18 volts and there's another 18 minus 18 volts for that okay so let's do those measurements really quick so here my trusty fluke here will measure that so now for example the pot that I told you is here so if I measure here what do I get? I get uh, around 18 volts, yeah, because no current is passing. Remember, we have to drive a signal into the input of the op amp, into the negative pin of the op amp, so that the op amp starts drawing current through the power supply terminals and thereby dropping on the R5, R6 and R5, which is basically here. So right now I'm measuring here, right at that point, that's where I'm measuring right now, which is on the uh, negative, as you can see it's minus 18 okay so that will be this point here so now I'm gonna go to the other potentiometer and I'm gonna put right there and that's mm, there's quite a bit of drop on this one 17 it says let's measure the rail yeah the rail is 18 but yeah, there's quite a bit of drop 17 the quiescent there's quite a bit of drop but anyway that, that's fine that's probably some mismatch in the transistors right so they're not going to be exactly the same 
and I'm going to measure the, so the point I measured is now on the positive rail, number three, junction three, that's what I measured. Okay, and now let's measure out the output of the speakers, let's see what the quiescent voltage is, as you can see, it's zero. As you can see, that's where I'm measuring, this is zero. And we can go, go right on the output of the op amp, which is pin six on this dip eight package. So right here, this this guy right here. Yeah, we have 0 0.3, so in the positive rail a little bit. Okay, so yeah, okay, sure. Right now, what I'll do is I'll play. Uh, just watch here. I'll play uh, some music, royalty free music on my computer here, and that will get coupled into uh, this song here. Okay, there you go. So, let's take a look here. So, this is the current. Yeah, oh, quite a bit of current. Anyway, you can listen to it. Quite a bit of, a little bit of distortion. Not the cleanest types of sound, but not bad. You can see. Okay, I'm gonna pause the music now. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, the power amplifier works, not bad. So we'll, what we'll do next is we'll uh, inject some signal, some uh, sine wave into the input, right here into the input, and we'll do some uh, load calculation, and I'll replace the speaker with a dummy load, an 8 ohm dummy load, which I have, yeah, right here. So I have, let's see here, let's see if you can see it, yeah, there you go. I have an 8 ohm 100 watt dummy load here and I'll put that and then I'll try to measure the output, okay. Okay, so uh, the uh, measurement is set up. Uh, I have the dummy load hooked up to, the 8 ohm dummy load, and I'm injecting um, some signal, a sine wave, 700 millivolts peak, uh, frequency of uh, 1 kilohertz, and uh, the output is shown there. As you can see, there's quite a bit of harmonics, but I'm using a, a dB scale, so the uh, we'll measure the harmonics, how bad they are, in a second. And, uh, the output, the peak to peak output is. Um, uh, it's 13.16 and the RMS is uh, 4.7 volts RMS into 8 ohms and we should be able to calculate the uh, the uh, power based on that how much power we're damping into the load and that's the output on the analog scope anyway so uh, first of all let's calculate the output power uh, and quickly calculate uh, the output power it's about uh, let's say 4 to be exact and 16 so it's about it's a little it's about 2.5 watts somewhere around there I'm not gonna try to bring a calculator trying to calculate that but yeah so it's about 2.5 watts uh, but the harmonic content doesn't look that great so let's take a look now so what I'll do is I will zoom in a bit so that I have more resolution into my FFT Sorry, I will zoom out in time domain to have uh, more resolution in frequency domain. Uh, okay, and then I'll just turn off channel 2 so that we only have the FFT on the screen. Okay, so there is the FFT. So you can see the uh, uh, it's 10 dB per uh, per, uh, per each division and uh, 
Also what we have is uh, 500 Hertz per uh, division horizontal. So you can see uh, it's my main tone which is at 1 kilohertz. My fundamental is uh, almost going to the top of the screen. So the next harmonic which is second harmonic at uh, 2 kilohertz is 1, 2, 3, almost 30 dB down. So not really great but listenable. <laughs> You can calculate based on this, the total, the THD actually, but uh, I'm not going to. It's a simple formula. You can take the peaks of each. Uh, okay, so if I uh, zoom. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can see how many harmonics there are. Um, so I'll just turn on channel 2. Zoom in in time domain to get less resolution in frequency domain. There we go. So as you can see, yeah, quite a bit of harmonics down to <laughs> God knows where. Uh, okay, so anyway, I'll turn on channel two again, and I'll just zoom back, zoom back in again, so just we get more harmonics on the screen. Um, again, I'm zooming in into frequency domain. Uh, sorry, in time domain, thereby reducing my frequency resolution it's it's always the inverse when you're doing FFT uh, anyway. uh, oh I turned off the FFT sorry Okay, all right, so here we are. Okay, yeah, quite a bit of uh, harmonics, but when you listen to it, it doesn't sound that bad. Anyway, I'll, I'll play your music one more time and then, uh, and then call it a... I'll finish the video. Okay. Okay, all right, so here we go again. So back to the speakers again. Uh, here I'll actually show you the FFT of the music I'm playing. And uh, so I'll just go with the speakers here. So I don't know how well the, the camera will capture the music, but uh, yeah, so if you can hear any distortion in it. I have turned on the output transistors a little more by adjusting these pots. By adjusting these pots, these two pots, I have biased the transistors to be a little more in the active region. That's why you, my quiz and current has increased. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little uh, fun, I guess. Uh, yeah, talk to you later.